Hey everybody, it's Owen Video, and we are just about to get started on the TubeBuddy channel with From Zero to YouTube Famous. I'm logging in just a little early to make sure that everything works. So if you're here, be sure to say hi in the comment section. I am pumped to be here. It has been a while since I have streamed with all you beautiful people. Uh, you might have been able to tell we've made some big changes around here and uh, and things are looking really good for the new year. So we're pumped to be here with you guys today and uh, and we hope that you will enjoy, oops, uh, enjoy the show. Who's out there? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me okay, everybody? No sound went out. What up, dude? Wonder Kids TV. We've got uh, Josephine DeSmet saying hi there. DZombified is logging in. Guys, I tried to get my comments up on the screen. Uh, it just wasn't working with OBS today. It just wasn't working. My beanie brother from another mother, D Nimmin, for pff, logging in, guys. A uh, lot has changed. A lot has changed <laughs> since the time. I've decided to go, I've decided to go uh, full Nimmin, uh, which if you would if you would if you would believe it. But I love how I love how the beanie is what D notices first. Uh, D notices first instead of like the amazing new uh, studio that, and the lights. We've got new lights back here. It's all it's all very pristine. Colette Colette C is saying you look so good. Can we? I'm just gonna get a little. You guys see my screen go? Oops. You guys see my screen go uh, crazy? It's because I'm getting a screenshot right now of this, and I'm gonna keep. Thank you, thank you, Colleen. Uh, just a little ego boost there for you. So I'm getting my questions all lined up. You guys can see as I'm I'm navigating sort of around here. Um, full Nimmin is trademarked. E for electric. Alex, great to see you, man. Love what you're doing. I love how uh, Alex, guys, has hit just an incredible amount of success. And in fact, Alex and I have had a lot of conversations uh, on the back end, um, private conversations at night. And a lot of what we've talked about, we're going to cover here today as we talk about some of the the skill sets that you need to master in between starting on YouTube and becoming famous on YouTube. Uh, so I'm excited to uh, to get started. Uh, Sam Morgan is saying, I'm gonna get famous over this video or I'm gonna sue. Ah, ah, you know, that's awesome. The sounds of success, you know, every in America it used to be work hard uh, to, to you get to the top and now it's like, sue the right person. Of course, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm just teasing everybody. So good, everyone, it looks like we're good. We sound good. Uh, Thelius Eye Candy, good to see you. Pfft. I wanna just say Star Cats is here. A-Town Alex, Heiko, Janika, good to see you. Andrew Can, Pfft. good to see you guys and all the two buddies out there. Wanna say what's up to Gaming by Gamers, uh, Theory of Bang, Magic Ears, and Star Cats. You guys were the first ones here. You were hanging out way before the show, so I wanna give you guys props. Uh, super pumped that you're here. Let's do a quick test here, guys. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me? And we're gonna be going full screen. Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Uh, guys, if you lost me at any time, please let me know. We've got a very interesting training coming up today. Something that's been on my uh, my heart for a long time because I have a heart for you guys. I love uh, growing YouTubers. And I was lucky enough to have a lot of success early on YouTube, which... I turned into a multiple six-figure business, you know, and my my business doesn't any longer rely on me uploading to YouTube so much. I have I have multiple assets. I have multiple streams coming in. Um, so now, you know, actually, we get to redo our YouTube, which is really uh, really exciting. We're we're actually working with Nick Nimmin on on building a better channel, and and the reason that we're able to invest. In, in that growth is because of the success we had early on. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about those skill sets and I've got a little bit of a presentation for you. I gotta fix this camera, hang on. This camera right here is losing battery. So I need to plug it in. Otherwise, it will die on us. And I'm using, I know you can't see me, I'm using these camera, these battery packs that are just really cool. I'm glad we're not live yet. We're gonna have to cut all this out. You know I. I dotted like all the I's and crossed all the T's except for this one. So let me just put, I wish I could show you guys the battery pack. I actually have these battery packs that I connect right to the back of the camera. Right, you guys should probably see, you can see how they've got four minutes left, but then I plug it in and now I've got full a full charge and that'll last me a while. Let's get the fan turned on too, it's hot in here, right? Being this sexy is 
is hot. So, okay, good. Thanks, Andrew. Sorry about that. All right, who's ready to get started? Say yeah, yeah if you're ready to get started. Um, Taper John says, we are live. We sure are, buddy. It's not going well. Let me tell you, we're falling apart at the seams here. Okay, I think we're good. Ready? <clears throat> All right, here we go, Andrew. We are starting this at, what mark is it? 3.03. Welcome to the pre-show, guys. Here we go. Imagine this. It's one year from now and you've got 25,000 YouTube subscribers. You are the hottest thing since sliced bread and your email, your phone is blowing up. You're getting calls from brands that want to work with you, but you have no idea how to talk to them. You're getting all this free stuff at your door, but you have no system for processing it or, or even working it into your channel. You got, you got all this money coming into your bank account now, but you have no plan for it. So as soon as it comes in, it goes out. You don't want to wake up with 25,000 subscribers and you don't know what to do with all the opportunity that is all of a sudden coming your way. This is how fortune is wasted and the flame of fame fans out. Zero to YouTube Famous is all about intentional growth. It's about the skill sets underneath the surface that lead to intentional growth on YouTube and in your life. Friends, I've been lucky enough to grow a multiple six-figure lifestyle from what started as a very small YouTube channel. And today, I want to share with you five skill sets that helped me to manage my small successes and scale them into big time growth. So I hope that you'll come along the ride with me today and subscribe to the channel because we've got a lot more content coming just like this. And hey, if you don't know me, uh, my name is Owen Video. I am the founder of the videomarketingschool.com where we train business owners how to grow a business with YouTube and online video. And of course, you're watching the TubeBuddy channel where the greatest app, the greatest app in the history of all YouTube, first of all, let's just be honest. Let's just be honest with each other. But if you're looking to grow on YouTube, then TubeBuddy will be your best friend along the journey. And we love you guys out there, Phil and Eric and Andrew. We love you guys and uh, we're, we're pumped to be streaming on your channel today. Now, this is a live stream, so I do want to say hi uh, to our friends out there who are watching on YouTube. want to say what's up to Love of Pets, who says, my channel is growing like crazy. I freaking love it. Uh, A-Town Alex is saying, just got a pro license for TubeBuddy. <laughs> high five, my man. Did you use my affiliate link? You know what? It's fine. It's fine. Don't even, it's not important. It's not important where you get it from. It's important that you, uh, you got, how many of you guys are drinking coffee, by the way? I'm in, this is my refill. You guys know you get a refill from Starbucks. Uh, this is my refill and I plan to, I came, I, I plan to use it. Okay. Pauline Newman. Good to see you. Oh, she's saying good to see you. Neat D. Nimmin. So not, not even about Lee's home is saying about to hit 11 K subs. That's great. Coffee all day long. Proteus rising. Glad to see you guys here. Uh, star cats is saying, I don't drink coffee. I'm 12 taper. John is saying mountain dew. J man speaks is saying I'm drinking coffee. Now Harley Pebble is saying, uh, I've got a latte with an extra shot right here. Lily tree is logging in. This is exciting. We got 84 viewers. I am super pumped to be here with you today. Uh, and I cannot wait to get started into today's content. So, you know, a couple weeks ago, how many of you guys are familiar with Rachel Farnsworth? Do you guys know Rachel Farnsworth? She's a live streamer. She's a YouTube expert. You know, when I go to conferences like Vid Summit or Video Marketing World, uh, Rachel Farnsworth is hot. She is, by all means, a YouTube celebrity. And recently on her page on Facebook, she, she posted this. So can you guys, can you guys see this now? I'm looking for it to come up on my, on my screen here. So I want to show this to you in more detail. 
because I'm only showing you half the post, but uh, you know, essentially what was going on is people were complaining about influencers and, and that influencers get paid too much money. Okay, and here's what she had to say. Take a listen to this. She says, I work about 360 days per year. Nowadays, I work an average of 40 to 60 hours per week, which is considerably less than the 80 to 100 hours I used to work in order to pull my business. I have three full-time employees and two part-time contractors. It costs me about $3,000 a year to run which my business, which includes equipment costs, website maintenance, employee salaries, hiring contractors, supplies, legal fees, payroll, uh, miscellaneous costs associated with running a small business, which is entirely YouTube-based, guys. This is not like a business and she advertises on YouTube. Her business is a cooking show and she does other stuff as well. She writes, skills I've had to develop to be successful include the following, professional food photography, food videography, writing, editing, website coding, search engine optimization, social media strategy, advertising and marketing, acting, contract negotiations, and more. I've had to be proficient in all of these areas just to stay afloat. Man, it takes considerable amounts of time and money to stay current in all of these areas that require constant improvement. Guys, being successful, okay, being successful on YouTube is not just about the videos that you're uploading. It's not just about your ability to tell a story. Those are the things that are gonna get you noticed. But once you're noticed, you have to be able to manage your own growth, okay? Growth. There's got to be a point where you're making great videos in your sleep. It's automatic to you. And you've got audience building. Who, who just hit 11K subs? Who hit a milestone recently? I want to see milestones in the comment section. And if you haven't hit a milestone in a while, you got to go download TubeBuddy and start using their milestone announcement. It's amazing. It, it gives you those wins when you really need to see those wins, okay? I heard somebody hit 11,000 subs. My good friend, you do it contracting, just hit 10,000 subs, okay? At 10,000 subs, you're gaining like 500,000 subs a month now and it's just rolling. I'm about to hit 50,000 subs because I haven't uploaded a video in two weeks, right? So there's this point where your channel's rolling and you've got opportunity now to explore. What are the skill sets, okay? What are the skill sets that are gonna take you into that next generation. Well, that's what From Zero to YouTube Famous is all about. The skill sets that you need to learn, extra YouTube, outside of YouTube, that are gonna lead to big growth on side of YouTube. We're gonna dig into these somewhat, we're gonna dig into these today, and I hope that even though we're talking about some things that may not be, you know, what you're used to hearing. You might be used to hearing about develop your tags and, and get this cool microphone. And, and those are kind of the fun and jazzy topics. What I want to share with you today, I want to share with you the real stuff, man, like the real stuff. Okay. Because I want to share with you a story. I didn't plan on sharing this story, but I was a young YouTuber and I was getting tons of business, uh, from, from uh, YouTube. And then I had already been doing business. So I was getting referrals and, and I had this referral from a business coach out in Del Mar. And at this time, I was doing a lot of live streaming. So they hired me to go to her apartment and uh, no, go to a hotel where she had a workshop and live stream that, that event. Well, we, I mean, we dealt with every complication in the book to get that done. She just, the internet sucked and, and there was just so much going on. It was absolutely ridiculous, but we pulled it off. We pulled it off and I would say we didn't deliver a 10, we delivered an eight product to her. Okay, well, this client just destroyed me, raked me across the coals. And I remember feeling so defeated and down and like I wanted to quit, right? And, and I remember coming, uh, being in my, my room at night with my wife. I'm married, I have a couple kids. And I come into my, my room at night and I take off my shoe and I just lost it. You guys ever have that moment where like you just lose it, right? And I'm like taking off my shoe and as soon as I like, I'm taking off my shoe. I'm like, this sucks. I hate my life. And you know, I threw, I threw the shoe and I just fell on the ground and started crying. And I was just like, I hate this. I hate this. No joke, man. No joke. How many of you guys have had that happen? 
okay? It happened because I was lacking in skill sets. And today I want to share with you guys some of the skill sets that I wish I would have learned earlier on, okay? So let's dig into it right now. The first skill set you guys need to be ready for is hiring and duplication, okay? Hiring and duplication. If you do everything, you'll never get anything done, okay? If you do everything, you'll never get anything done. What does that mean? Well, it means that in a day, you have 24 hours, okay? But when you hire someone, now you have 48 hours to work with, okay? And I'm gonna come to your comments in a minute. I can see on my monitor here, the comments are blowing up. So I'm gonna come back to those in a minute. And if you're watching on the replay, be sure to leave a comment right now. Tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what you're thinking about as you're watching this right now, okay? And get comfortable. I'm gonna fly through these, but I wanna do some Q and A in like, in like 10 minutes, okay? Hiring is a skill, okay? You are going to have to hire people to help you. And that, that includes all sorts of training, like leadership training, okay? You gotta know how to lead people, how to align people with your vision. And I actually, I had come up, guys, with, I, I had come up with so many different skill sets that you need, and I chose, I chose to focus on only a, a small amount. I, what was most important? Hiring is a skill. It's not about finding a person. It's about finding the right person, okay? You've got to hire for what you hate doing. So what do you hate doing? That's the thing you've got to hire for. You've got to get to a place where everything you do energizes you. Otherwise, you're going to get burnt out on YouTube. How many of you guys have ever been, been burnt out on YouTube? Okay, leave me a, leave me a comment in the, in, the, in the comment section below. So hiring is a good thing. I know so many of you are thinking, I'm 12, I'm 14. So what, man? Look at Parker Parnell. Uh, look at tag. Does anybody know him? Tag him on Twitter. Say we're giving him a shot out at, at, at what time is it? At 314. Okay. What about Caleb Maddox? 16 year old millionaire. Okay. You need to know how to hire people and that you, you should start learning now. I'm spending too much time on this. Duplication is about duplicating your brand characteristics to someone else. So duplication is kind of like hiring, but it's not the exact same thing. Duplication is about you know, let's say that you're, you're the best editor for your company, right? For your YouTube channel, you're the best YouTube editor, right? You never, no one's ever going to edit like you. Well, you'll, you're going to have to crank out more videos if you want to stay on top. Okay. So you've got to be in a place where you can teach someone else how to edit like you. Duplication is very, very challenging, especially because largely you're going to want to find someone who's not like you, right? You don't want to find, if you're the energetic, like vision caster of your company, of your channel, uh, you want to hire someone who's more like just going to follow orders. You don't want to, you don't want to hire another, another person like you. That'll be a real challenge to, uh, to deal with. Okay. The, uh, the next one here, QuickBooks and financial. Now this one lost my mouse here. This one drives me absolutely wild. Uh, because I am no good at QuickBooks and financial. It's something that I've hired out for, okay? You need to have a plan for your money and you need to work that plan. Um, I have seen, you guys don't maybe don't know, right? I've been in YouTube for six years. Uh, I've been a leader for six years and I'm not saying that to brag, okay? Um, I'm saying that because when you go to the conferences and you guys, some of you guys know me. Alex, you know me. D, you know me. I speak at the conferences. I'm emceeing the gigs. Um, I've been on top for six years, guys, and I've worked hard to be there. You have got to stay on top of your game. And so you might need to hire someone to manage your, your... Wait, that's not where I was going. Here's where I was going. I've seen a lot of crap. I've been to so many conferences. Shay Carl. Hey, okay, I know he's making his way back. Biggest guy he's been back. Biggest guy in YouTube. Boom, crumbles into addiction. Crumbles into addiction. Why? Too, it's too much of this stuff, man. Too much money coming in. Uh, you need to know where your money's going. When this money starts coming into your bank account, sure, at first it's great to go spend it, right? And have some fun with it. But that lifestyle only lasts so long. We've all heard about the lottery winners. Uh, we've all heard about the lottery winners that make some money and then they lose all that money. That happens on YouTube all the time. How many of you guys, give me like a thumbs up or like, Tell me a person's name where you've heard of this, where they get famous, 
and then lose it all. You have to manage your growth, knowing, knowing where your money's coming from, how much from sponsorships, how much is coming from brand deals, how much is coming from AdSense, and so on and so forth, right? Those are the things you need to know. You need to, be, you need to know how to track them. Uh, and even putting money away for retirement, okay? And I'll, I'll get to retirement in a while. Some of you guys are so young, retirement seems like forever away. It, it is, it is. Uh, but all of this, all of this could be gone in a heartbeat. You don't own any of this. YouTube goes bankrupt. Somebody buys YouTube. Um, any number of things. YouTube policies change. All of it goes away. You need to be able to survive outside of outside of YouTube. Hey, we got 93 live viewers right now. Let's see if we can get to 100, uh, 100 viewers today. And I'm going to go and I'm going to go into the comment section, just kind of hang out with you guys for a second. Um, Lee's home is saying it's not that far away for me. Uh, yeah, good, man. Like as those deals, the, the more subscribers you get, guys, the faster those deals are going to come in and you won't even know what's going to happen. Next thing you know, you're going to get like, you're going to get all these deals coming in and you need to know what's, uh, what's happening to it. Uh, art by April is saying, I have a finance manager. Tim Schmoyer does too. I, my sister, uh, is, is my finance manager and she's doing great. If you guys have a question, we're going to be answering your questions in a, just a couple minutes here. Use the form that Andrew's using. That's what I'm going to be paying attention to. All right, so let's keep moving. We're talking about skill sets that you need to master. This one is major, major. You guys ready for it? Boom, here it is. Traveling. You've got to get good at traveling. Conferences is where the deals are at. You're gonna go to conferences and this is where you're gonna meet the people that make the deals. My very first conference was Vid Summit. I met Daryl Eves, he changed my life. It absolutely changed my life. You know why? Because I'm ambitious and at the time I was younger, I was six years younger and I was just like, dude, what do you got? I'll do anything. We got a video coming out on that soon enough. It cost me money to travel. I had to stay in a hotel, I had to buy, then I got there and I'm eating junk food and I'm feeling fat. And now, cause like for me, the way that I look matters, right? Like it matters how you look in my line of business, right? I wanna look better than the other MCs, the other live video hosts. So I'm sitting there, I'm fat belly, my belly's gurgling, right? Now I have a plan. I have a plan for when I travel. In fact, I get to the hotel about a day early. I go to a local store and I buy shakes. And so I've got shakes and food to eat. I use pretzels a lot because pretzels don't leave resin on your camera and your gear, right? They're easier to snack on. And by having, learning how to travel for cheap, what airlines to take, what you're going to eat, who is gonna watch your kids, who's gonna watch your dog, having all of those things in place makes it systematic. So now when a conference comes up, you're ready for it. You know who to call, you know where your stuff's gonna go, you know what you're gonna pack, right? Now I actually have a suitcase in my closet at all times and it's, it's partially filled right now. I don't mean filled, filled, but there's items in it that I buy distinctly. There's toothbrush, there's toothpaste, there's deodorant, like all that stuff's already in there. I've even like took some of my face wash out, you know, squeezed it out. And so I've got all that stuff. So now when I need to travel, I don't ever have to grab that stuff, right? It's already in there. Okay. Along with some things like head, I've got extra headphones in there batteries, right? These types of things. They're always in my, okay. And this allows you to show up. And when you show up, that's when the deals happen. Okay. In fact, I was at a uh, vid summit just this last year, uh, where I met Kristen Hills, Kristen Hills from six sisters. She's phenomenal. Okay. She recognized me, which was phenomenal, but making that connection where you're right next to somebody that either will support you along the way. Evan Carmichael, meeting Evan Carmichael at events and being able to spend that extra time with him. Meeting with Jeremy Vest of Master Thumbnails. Wow, Sean Cannell. I went to Sean Cannell's event. Sean, here's a story, a great story about Sean Cannell. Sean Cannell hosted an event last year that I would really like to go to, but it was $1,000, $1,000, guys. And I don't care who you are, $1,000 matters, right? We do well, $1,000 matters. Um. Sean Cannell calls me up personally and he's like, hey bro, or you know, Facebook or whatever. And he's like, hey, I, I think you need to, I think this is your breakout. I think you need to be here. So you know what I did? Because I have, a, because I believe in showing up, I believe in traveling. I went out to the event 
and um, and it was it was game changing for me. It was one of those next level events, right? It was a next level event where I got my business to the next level. Met some great people too. Again, some of those people became customers. They became clients at the video marketing school. So how great is that? Okay. All right, next one. Guys, you have to get good at pitching to sponsors. You have to get good at pitching to sponsors. A lot of what you hear out there about sponsorship is crap, right? You hear all these like, I tell my sponsors what I'm gonna do. BS, man, BS. Like, I, I've been in the game, guys. I know the, the top money makers in this industry. And you know what? Even the top guys have to meet brand standards. Guess what? The top guy wants that $10,000, $30,000 brand deal. He's not going to be like, I don't need that brand deal, right? There are YouTubers out there that, that are, are talking about, they stick to their rules and they do all this. Guys, that's 90% garbage, okay? There's definitely a brand standard you have to maintain with your own channel. But to think that, that you're going to be able to maintain that, especially in the beginning, it's not going to work. Okay. You can't just tell the brand, they're going to say, why did you make this video with, you know, with our, with our, with our brand name, with our product in it. And you're going to be even like, oh, cause I wanted to, that's not going to work. You're going to get fired and sued, right? Cause we're, you're not a little YouTuber anymore, right? So you got to know how to navigate those conversations. I want to share with you guys an example because I, I kick ass at getting brand sponsors all the time, right? I'm not talking about, you guys, I'm scratching my back. No, I'm not talking about $30,000 deals, but I, you know, I got deals like that. Um, I can get brand deals all the time. In fact, I have more than I even know what to do with. And it's because I have a great approach. In fact, there are YouTubers on this stream right now um, that I've coached in, in how to get, in how to get sponsors. So I want to share with you guys um, uh, a situation. And this is from, this is an actual pitch, okay? So there's a software company called Vesita, and we use Vesita in our online marketing course. In fact, we, we tell everybody about Vesita because we love, we love this product. And I'm sorry that these slides are out of, like they're not balanced. I'm still sort of dialing in this, um, this thing. And that the thing is blocking it, but it says, okay, so here's what happened is I wrote Vesita on Facebook and I wrote Vesita on Instagram on their thread, right? Without, it wasn't a private message, but they had posted a post about, you know, this advertisement. Hey, we're Vesita and we do this thing. Well, I use Vesita all the time. So I, I write, Hey, I use Vesita all the time. We use you guys in our course. Uh, and, uh, we just absolutely love the product or service. We should collaborate on something. Put that on their post on Facebook, put that on their post on Instagram, knowing that it was an ad, right? And leaving it testimonial first, right? So it's like testimonial first and then ask, okay? So I know how to talk to the brand, period. I know how to talk to them. And th within minutes, um, this is what I got from them. Let's take a look. Oops, I'm, I'm using two computers here. Hey, I would love to discuss ways that we could work together could you email me at miriam at vesita.com? Thanks. And then I wrote them back because I know how to deal with brands. I gave them back a voice message. Why? Because it's, it's non-binding. A voice message is non-binding. I can, I can mess up and it's okay. But I also, I have a pitch. I, I have a pitch where I say, hey, it's great to meet you. Uh, me and my team love what you do. And we, I've got great ideas for us. I'm going to reach out to you via email. And that pitch is now, it's now in the works. Okay. So knowing how to talk to brands. Okay. We got to hurry up. We're running out of time here. Uh, last tip, last tip. And then we'll go into some questions. Okay. Is you've got to have an exit plan and next level thinking. This is a, a skill set. Okay. That, that you need to develop it. You can get really stuck in sort of this. I just make videos and whatever happens, happens, you know, either you're lying to yourself, meaning that you, you really do want YouTube success, but you don't want to say it out loud because then maybe you'll let yourself down. Right. How many of you guys done that? I I've done it. We've all done it. Um, 
But that type of attitude isn't, it's not a successful attitude, right? There's nobody that got to the top and is like, well, I doubted myself all the time and I made it right to the top. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You have to train your brain into next level thinking. You have to have the self-awareness, which many small YouTubers lack. Nobody on this call, of course, nobody on this call, but many small YouTubers lack this, this next level, this self-awareness that says, I'm a small baby YouTuber. I haven't put in the time. I don't deserve the success yet, right? There's so much of this thinking that says, I want this really bad, therefore I deserve it, okay? That's not gonna get you anywhere. You've gotta think, okay, how can I be at the top of my game right now today? How can I be at the top of my game right now today and what am I gonna do next? Okay, next level thinking. Now an exit plan, an exit plan is exactly that. It's how do you get out of YouTube, right? Some of you, you, you know, like this might be fun and you hope you can make some money, but you want to raise a family. You want to get married, have kids, do the soccer thing, maybe be a traveling vlogger, okay? Do you want to do YouTube forever? And I want, look, I think I'll be making video forever, but I don't think I'll be teaching YouTubers forever. I think I have, we have our own content that we're doing. We have our own visions. Amazon, Apple TV is launching their own Netflix. Amazon, everybody's investing in video content. We make great video content. I want, I want to make a show that I sell to Amazon, right? So I'll always be involved in video, but, but I have an exit plan for, I'll share with you my exit plan, guys. It's real estate, okay? Our goal is to make enough money here doing what makes money to put aside money for apartments and condos that we own, that we rent out, and we get into that game, okay? And that will give us the, at least it's our plan, that that will give us the financial freedom uh, to, to build whatever show that we wanna build. That's our, 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 our exit plan. Our next level thinking right now has to do with the video marketing course and automating training and, and, and that, sort of, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end with this. Um, I used to be younger when I started this game. I was about 30, 32 when I started it. Maybe 30, started uploading, 32, got serious. I used to be younger and my youth uh, played a big role in my success. That's no joke, right? Because I would show up to these events and I was like this young, excited YouTuber, right? Everybody else was like these SEO experts and some of these older guys, right? So my youth played a, a big role, but here's the thing. Even for you young guys today, youth is fleeting. And I consider, I still consider myself very young, don't get me wrong, but young is relative to the people in your age bracket, right? Uh, can you be a beauty YouTuber at 35? Can you be a fitness blogger after two kids? Maybe, what's your plan, okay? Is is YouTube a strategy to gain finance so that you can invest in something bigger? I'm not talking about your why. Maybe your why is you wanna serve poor people, go on mission trips, that's, that's your why. But I'm talking about, I'm not talking about your why, I'm talking about your what's next, okay? What's your what's next? Because someone younger, faster, and smarter is right behind you. The culture changes. And someday the music on your radio won't be your music anymore. How do you appeal to younger generations and break into new markets? That's how you'll continue to grow your influence and grow to get huge on YouTube. Or is that even what you want? Some things to... Uh, some things to, uh, to think about here, guys. And now what I want to do is, is open up the floor to answer uh, any questions that you might have about the content that we covered here today or really anything else that may, you may want to uh, you may want to chat about. I'm going to open up my, uh, my comments here. What do we got? 93 viewers, man. Almost so close to 100. Hey, if you guys would, would tweet this out, share this. Um, we would love to, love to hear from you. Okay. Question time. Actually, I've got, I'm going to go into, I just want to say what's up to a town. Alex, 25 years old. 
30 Days uh, Reviews is here. Sh Shelly saves the day, is saying, I'm just getting started. Taper John is saying, so true on Generation. Zapata Media, good to see you, Carlos, is saying, my radio is just Korean pop. Well, you, sir, are listening to the right channel. Hey, Vergard is here. Great to see you. Creator Fundamentals is saying 42 and just getting started, bro. <laughs> Look, I, I, a big shout out. I'm not 40 yet, but, but big shout out to my, my brothers who are over 40. And I'm not going to call you guys out because that might not be your thing. But my brothers that are over 40, you, my, my friends over 40 are the most successful YouTubers that I personally know, right? Because there is, there is like a tenacity and an experience that comes with age uh, that you just can't find. Uh, you just can't find everywhere else. Um or anywhere else. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to the, okay, here it is. I see the responses. It says seven responses. Maybe you deleted, um, uh, deleted that. Okay. So the, the first question I have is, and I don't, let me see if I can just, uh, sorry guys. Okay. Uh, this one is from Lee's home. And Lee says, do you think going to Vid Summit would be worth it for me with 11,000 subscribers? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't believe you got to 11,000 without going to Vid Summit. Vid Summit was the breaking point for me. I, I had had one video. One video was successful. And, and I was frustrated because I, I couldn't duplicate that, right? And at the time, there, there were no real Tim Schmoyers. Uh, there were no, well, there was a Daryl Eves. I didn't know about him. And I began to look at who can help me with YouTube. That's when I found Daryl Eves. And when I met Daryl, he said, you've got to come to Vid Summit. And I trusted him. And there's a lot of reasons why I trust him. And I would say that Daryl is trustworthy. But I trusted Daryl and I came to Vid Summit. And you know what I saw? I saw people just like me that, that were ambitious and talented and loved video and they were teaching me and, and I was teaching them and we were all sort of learning from each other. And my channel blew up. I learned about thumbnails. I learned about metadata. I didn't even know any of this stuff. I just thought it was all about like a good video. So I was trying to make all these different types of videos and it's like, no, like duplicate, right? That was my first thing, duplicate. Uh, so Vid Summit is absolutely key. I know that there's a lot of people on the stream that have been to Vid Summit. Um, so I would say to go. And I would say to get registered now because it, the price will go up. And um, there, you know, I get calls every year from, from people in this community that are like, hey, can you get me in? And the answer is no, I can't. Like, it's, I, I, I am an MC. I MC Vid Summit. Um, uh, you, you know, I can't, I don't have a lot of pull. That's not my conference. You know, I'm hired to work there. Um, all right, next question we've got is from. Uh, is it Jin Fio? Jin Fio is asking, and I'm using two mouses here. Can you freely use YouTube videos that are free to use? Here's what I mean. Someone says, hey, you can use my video on your YouTube video. Can I just say okay and use their videos or would I need to go through a different step? Okay, what about the channels that say they have free songs like copyright free songs for YouTube creators. Should I just download and use their tracks or is there another step I need to go through? Okay, that's actually a really great question. Um, when somebody gives you permission to use a song they own, okay, then, then that works. You don't need to sign an agreement, okay? But what I would do is I would get a verbal and I would screenshot that ver uh, verbal. I'd get an email or a messenger alert. Maybe you're using the YouTube messaging. By the way, how many of you guys use the YouTube messaging feature? I don't use it. I don't ever use it. Message me at Owen Video. I'd love to, I'd love to, to, to get up on that gravy train. Look, um, if you can get that, that, so hey, I'm writing this email just to confirm, or I'm writing this message just to confirm that you did say it's okay for me to use your songs from, from YouTube, correct? Question mark. And then they'll write back, sure thing. And you screenshot that and you, you save it in your, in your legal file and you've got it, right? You've got it in case anything ever happens. Um, now, you, if they give you permission to download a song they don't own, then, you know, you're going to have to, you know, you'll be responsible for that. Your agreement with them is not going to matter at all. You, you know, they, maybe they thought they owned it, which has happened to me 
or maybe they bought it and they just have the rights but they can't resell it or give permission so make sure that they own it uh, as long as you get a yes from them you know and you have that like a like a verbal is not going to work like you need to have something in writing now on the downloading the stuff from the youtubers they need to have the right license and it's creative commons which means that everybody can sort of use this so use creative commons now keep in mind uh, i don't know what your channel does i'm guessing it's gaming or entertainment you know i mean if you're doing educational you're i mean you guys need permission gamers and entertainment you need permission but if some of you guys are doing vlogs that are educational or you're teaching or training then the Fair Use Act allows you to use um, uh, any co copyrighted content, as long as you're teaching. And you have to prove that you're teaching. Um, remember, Fair Use doesn't, doesn't prevent a lawsuit. Um, it helps to stop a lawsuit. So if you ever have to go to court to talk about Fair Use, you've already lost money. Like, you, you're already, it's, it's already a pain in the butt. So think about that. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna to try to answer everybody's questions here. Uh, do you have, this one question is from Naturally Zandra. Uh, she's asking, if that's a she, uh, do I really need to narrow, is that right? Yeah, Naturally Zandra. Do I really need to narrow down to a niche if I like to make videos on different topics? Absolutely 100% yes, absolutely 100% yes. Um, take it from me, okay, uh, if nobody else. I've done what you're doing on multiple channels. And the reason that Nick Nimmin has skyrocketed past me, the reason that Roberto Blake has skyrocketed past me is because they stayed focused on a niche and they ran with it. Um, uh, uh, the Ohana Adventure, okay. Um, what's, what's Bryce Jurgi? The Jurgis. You guys watch the Jurgies? They're great. Um, it's all about a niche. Now, when you talk about different topics, you what you have to do, sort of the art and science of YouTube, and this is something I've had to figure out in my own life, right? Because I cover I cover chatbots and then YouTube and then SEO and website design. Like, what am I, right? What am I, right? What you have to figure out is what's the common thread. Okay, I want you to hear me on this. What's the common thread that goes through all of your videos? So answer that. Answer that for me in the comment section. I'm going to come in and look and see if I can see your answer. Is the expert plumber here? Blackwing Paranormal is saying, I'm so watching this stream again with a pen and paper. Thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, Shelly Saves the Day is saying, uh, you can do variety, just don't be surprised when you grow. Just You can do variety, just don't be surprised when you don't grow. Trust me, I've tried. Um, Mike Phillips is talking about leadership on his channel. Expert plumbers here, that's awesome, guys. Great to see you. Uh, Mike Phillips is taking notes. Yeah, you got to like hone down on your niche. And and maybe, maybe the thing that, that like if it's a vlog, because I, I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen her... Uh, Naturally, Zanda, Zandra is saying, I don't agree. I, you know, okay. I don't know if you're talking to me or, or, or whatever, but, um, you know, th this is, Andrew Can is saying, variety is the spice of life until it kills your channel. Uh, Roberto Blake has a whole presentation on variety shows are dead. I mean, again, doubt me if you'd like, but I challenge you to travel, to go to the conferences and to hear what the experts are saying. Nobody is saying build a variety channel to the top of YouTube. Nobody is saying that. They're saying the exact opposite. It's up to you if you're going to listen or to continue in level one YouTubing. You know what I mean? Mike Phillips saying you're spot on. You know, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be rude either, but uh, I want to be real with you guys, right? Like I want to be real. Like new, news flash, um, I've got to grow with or without you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I got my own business to run. And I'm going to do what works. And I'm not here to like waste my time and tell you guys, oh, here's some fluff, right? So here's a good one. I love this one. Um, A-Town Alex is saying, do you have any tips on using Instagram to promote your channel? I have every tip to promote on. 
Instagram is awesome. Instagram should be your ancillary, um, uh, should be your ancillary platform, especially for YouTubers. Here's what you do not do. Do not post your thumbnails on uh, Instagram. On Instagram, post what works on Instagram, okay? For me, what works for me is real life shots of me working. In fact, Teresa Love, can you come get some real life shots of me? Doing, so I've, I gotta remind my wife to come in here and get shots of me, we'll grab the Canon M50. Hopefully there's a card in here. I love, or battery for that matter. Um, yeah, you know, you've gotta get, no, there's no battery in here. Um, you've gotta get, you've gotta get, do what works for you. And, and what's working for me on Instagram, I'll just tell you right now, is stories. Stories is hot. So on stories, I'll be like, wow, like what do, how do you grow on YouTube? Here's a bunch of ideas, boom, boom, boom. Uh, I just launched a video today. Are you gonna watch it? You know, yes or no, tap yes or no. And then here's the thing, like, or I, I just did a video today. Do you wanna see it, tap yes or no? Then everyone that taps yes, you can go and see who it was. So everyone that taps yes, you, you say, you know, hey, thanks for tapping yes. Here's a link to my video. You, you, you type that in and then you copy it and then you paste it into everybody else that said yes. So stories are great. Uh, to promote your channel. Um, can you use this camera? And I think that the battery pack is either over there or in the kitchen. All right, if we could just get some of those. So yes, use Instagram, and that's what's working for me on Instagram right now, okay? Um, all right, who's talking to this uh, live stream? And, and con Taper John, okay, cool, I love it. Uh, here's a trivia question, Taper John. Do you know who was the first band to allow uh, tape recording at, at their shows. Which band was that? It's, it's some pretty awesome trivia. Um, I live stream and I upload live concerts. The music is old. Audience is not the younger generation type. How would I gain subs in this area? Well, what are you, what are you doing, man? Like, I, YouTube is not the place for re-uploading, okay? So if you've got, I mean, unless you're just trying to build an archive, did you find it? What's that? No, I don't know. It's, it's somewhere. That's my challenge to you is that it is somewhere. Uh, I'm talking to my wife. She's wandering around back here. Um, so look, who, what's the problem your, your channel's trying to solve, okay? So YouTube is not the place to like re-upload your stream or to upload a concert that wasn't pre-promoted or in any way positioned for your listeners, okay? So what are you uploading, first of all? What are you live streaming? Um, the music is old. So here's what I would do if I were you. Just kind of knowing what I'm seeing here. Is maybe your channel a channel for uploading interviews? Can you get interviews with the band members? Right? Can you get interviews with the band members? And, and maybe upload those. Um, if you're going to upload concerts, what I would do is I would develop an email list of older people that would like your music, right? Like if, uh, if someone likes the Grateful Dead, they would probably like my, my stuff. And so what you do, what are we doing? I want you guys to see this. It's not in there, I promise you it's not in there. Okay. Melissa put it somewhere to charge. I wish you guys could see her. Just I wish I could just, I need to have a cam here. I could just, um, because she's trying like not to disturb anything. And it's like, just come on in. Just come on in and say hi. Um, so, you know, I, you need to build an email list of older people. Oh, we need one more. One more live stream to get to 100. Hey, babe, take a picture of that with your phone. 99 people. Right there. Right there. Take a picture of that screen. Sorry, guys. We're trying to like, we're marketing here. Uh, vertical and long ways. Vertical and long ways. Uh, you got to think about what's your channel for. Develop a list of older people that like this kind of music. And before you do a live show... You know, promote it, get people there, they enjoy the live show, right? That's, that's the pull to your channel. Otherwise, you gotta think of what your channel's there for, man. You know, like maybe you could do a thing on how to play guitar, right? Or how to be a musician. Um, I, I had a client that that's, he had a venue and that's what he would do is upload his shows. We just, we, you know, where we had success was interviewing the, the, the clients, was interviewing the, the people that actually. Um, okay, here's a great question. 
But your subs, if I could answer that again, like your subs are gonna come from finding them elsewhere. Get them on an email list and then you bring them to YouTube. Uh, whichever one will work. Okay, we had a good one. Mountain Crest Farm is asking, um, how much should you narrow down a niche or a niche, right? Homesteading, for example, is do-it-yourself homeowner, market gardening, farm equipment repair. What is the niche? Homesteading or the smaller bits of homesteading? Okay. Um, that's a great question. I love that question. Okay. So first of all, you've, homesteading is your category. It could be called your niche. Um, I think that you'll have more success if you niche, niche that down. So if you talk about, for example, uh, homesteading to me, because I'm a city slicker, right? So homesteading to me is something that I can do here in my suburb. And I think that you are not suburban homesteading. I think that you are something like um, off the grid homesteading, right? Off the grid, check it out. You guys can see the, the, <laughs> the microphone. You guys are off the grid. Um, maybe get some footage too while you're there. Uh, you're off the grid homesteading or like a subcategory of homesteading is what I'm recommending to you. Now, Benji Travis and I, do you guys know Benji? Benji Travis and I talked about this at length at ClamorCon last year. It's not enough to just be a fashion blogger now. You have to be sort of like a, like a women's uh, um, like avant-garde fashion or like, a women's casual fashion or like a women's fitness fashion, right? You've got to be in a niche underneath your category. So I don't think you need to go like, like market gardening because that's too wide or too small. You need to do something like off the grid homesteading or um, something else that says animals, farm, you know, because um, remember there's suburbanites like me that love homesteading but it's not, it's not your version. It's a different, it's a different version. So something to think about. Uh, I would go one level deeper than homesteading if that, if that helps. Okay. Um, how do you approach, who wrote this one? Proteus Rising. So Proteus, what do you do? That's a great question. Uh, Proteus Rising is saying, how do you approach potential, uh, potential sponsors for pitching? Um, for, I've taught this before. There's a video on this channel. Maybe Andrew, you could link it. Um, on how to get sponsors, okay? And with sponsors, what I recommend, the first thing is make a list. Make a list of all the softwares, tools, and brands that you use, big and small, okay? So if you're already using this, that, or the other thing, you know, oops, um, then, hello. Then, then put them on your spot. It's really easy to go and say, hey, I've been using your stuff for years. We're a big channel and we'd love to work with you. So that's number one thing that I would do. Uh, the next thing that, that I would do is um, uh, create of potential sponsors. Okay, uh, potential sponsors. Make a list of, of the people you'd like to work with. And these, don't make it GoPro. Don't make it, you know, John Deere, right? Make it somebody, a brand that you know is into this kind of thing. Uh, make it somebody who you know um, uh, has the money to afford you, okay? And then when you pitch them, you need to just pitch them. We spend too much time dancing around. You need to say, hey, well, I'll, I'll, let me take it back. Here's actually what I would coach you to do. Make a video where they are the sponsor and put it on Dropbox. And you say, hey, look, I'm making a video for you guys. I love what you do. My channel's growing. We, like, if you're small, you say my channel's growing. Remember, 500 subscribers to a brand is awesome. You think it sucks. You do. You think it's small because you hang out with people uh, like TubeBuddy with 265,000 subs. 500 subs is not small to a company, right? They're like, how'd you do that, right? So say, hey, we've got a growing channel. If you've got 5,000 subs, you say, hey, we have a solid channel. If you've got more than that, you say, hey, we have an incredible channel, right? Hey, we got an incredible channel. We'd love to work with you. Here's an idea. We made this video for you and we thought we'd send it to you just to give you uh, some love. It'll be on YouTube shortly. Let me know if you'd like to share it. Send them the Dropbox link. They can watch it and, uh, and, and, and then follow it. See what happens from there, okay? 
Uh, that is exactly what I did for GetResponse. Uh, GetResponse has become a huge client. I did the same thing with BeLive. Client, uh, it's more of a sponsor. Um, uh, it's actually more of a client because we we're, we're now it's they're ingrained in what we do. So that's what I recommend is is do the work before they pay you for the work. Because you know what brands would love more than one video is a series of videos. So don't feel like oh you've done you've done too many videos for them, right? Do the work first, is what I say. All right, so I don't know who asked this one. Oh wait, I could find out though. Leader of Jedi, my channel is stalemate. How do I help it to grow? Okay, well, that's we just talked about that. Okay? You need next level thinking. What you're doing isn't working anymore. You're going to have to do something else. What is that thing, man? I don't know. I don't know your channel. You know, but I think you know. I think you know inside it's this thing that you've been dreading to do or you think it's going to cost you too much or maybe you'll have to take more time off of work. Whatever that thing is, do that thing. Do what you're scared of. You need next level thinking to get to the next level. Um, now, my advice to you is to use outside platforms, right? This is the way the YouTube algorithm works, right? A bunch of people see your video, and then the next time they log in, they see another one of your video. If, you, if they don't click on that next video, it's very unlikely they're going to see you again until they watch another video. So you have got to always be bringing new people to your channel, okay? Always. Now, hang on a second. I got, I just got to 100 subscribers over here, and I want, or 100 live viewers, and I want to capture that moment before it's too late. Man, sometimes if you, you know, sometimes it's just like you just got to leave the stream and do what, do what works. And I got it. It just went down to 97, so we got it in time. We got the image in time. Um, you know, you, you've got to be, um, you've got to be thinking about bringing your own people to the party and what that looks like using Facebook, using Instagram, using an email marketing list. The, these are things that I have found YouTubers hate doing, right? But it's what I did. And, and I mean, I'm very comfortable on YouTube. Now I'll agree. I agree that I didn't grow the same way Nick grows or that you guys want to grow, right? You guys, a lot of you guys want to grow on straight view, video views. Uh, and that's cool. I, you know, I never wanted to be in a place where I had to keep dancing for the man. I never wanted to be in a place where I had to keep dancing for the man. I never wanted to be in a place where I have to just keep making videos or my income dies. Right? I wanted to be in a place where my income didn't depend on me, where it all, stuff was happening with or without me. For me, that was grow a company. Now, I'm also terrified of being poor. I grew up very poor. Um, and I grew up around a lot of abuse. And so, you know, there's there's... Part of me that's like, I have to be rich and famous. You guys can relate to that. There was a part of me that said, I have to be rich and famous to prove that I'm like, not the scumbag my mom said I was, right? You know what I mean? Uh, and that's, that's unhealthy thinking. Largely, it, it, it took some, some counseling to bring me out of that way of thinking to where I could actually enjoy my life, you know? Uh, and that we could talk about that mental health. I'd love to talk to Roberto Blake about that. I always challenge him to talk about uh, mental health with me because I know he, he, he's into that topic. Um, next level thinking is when it, what's going to get you out. Bring your own people to the party. Do this. Do like an event on Facebook. I hate Facebook. Well, you know, whatever then. Don't ask questions. And then, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not calling you out, uh, uh, Jedi. I'm just saying for those of you like, oh, I hate Facebook, right? May get creative. Maybe it's not Facebook. Maybe it's... Uh, uh, what's hot for you right now? Maybe it's Snapchat. Maybe it's Instagram. Do a live stream on Instagram once a week and, and talk about your subject and invite everybody to, uh, invite everybody to, um, uh, to say, hey, if, you, if you'd like me to send you a link to my channel, type yes right now in the comments. Go back, watch the live. Anybody that comments yes, find their channel, message them. Bring them to YouTube so that when you upload again, they get an alert again. Wow, 111. We're really, we're really cranking. We're hitting that hour mark too. Um, how to get more fans? Go find more fans, guys. Stop waiting for everyone to come to you, right? A leader goes out and finds their fans, right? You got to find them. You got to go into small niches and, and, and make friends and say, here's what I'm doing without being spammy, you know? It takes time and it takes relationship. You know, I have time in my calendar every day, but I don't do it every day. 
Um, but I have an alarm that goes off at 745 every morning that says, go build relationships online. So right now, LinkedIn is the place for me to be. So I'm, I'm going to LinkedIn. I'm learning how that all, that all works. Okay. Uh, you know, my, my meet more people and then bring them over to YouTube. And then next month I'll meet more people and bring them over to YouTube. Okay. That's how you get more fans. Um, for beginners, do I need to upload videos every single day to gather more subscribers or I, do I only need to follow my analytics? Okay, look, analytics, guys, are, are simply numbers. When, when people say things like, um, when people say things like, I need to follow my analytics, right? Your analytics are just numbers. What you have to do is get good at interpreting your analytics and making uh, making decisions based on them. So it's the interpretation of your data that matters. Are you interpreting it correctly? That's, that's what's key. So I always say, follow your data. It's like one of the hardest things for me to do. Uh, just ask Nick, my good buddy, who's just constantly trying to keep me focused because I want to make variety. I want to do this. I want to do that. Right. I still struggle with it. Um, what was your question? But do you up, need to upload every single day? No, right now I would focus on the best video you can make in the time that you have, right? The best video that you can make in the time that you have. If that's one video a week, I would make your best one video that week. And then next week make another video, right? Uh, you're gonna uploading crap every day, it no, it's not gonna work, right? Make great videos, build a fan base. Maybe it's every two weeks, but they're really good videos that get great watch time, right? Then as you start to develop that process, right? Now you can start to do more videos. And I'm telling you guys, these are the skills that are gonna get you to that next level. For example, uh, where is it? Hiring and duplication, right? When you get to this place where, where okay, once one video every two weeks is good, now I, I've got to duplicate my efforts. I got to hire an editor, for example, who's not like me, right? Loves to do nerdy work and, you know, has a part time job because you probably can't pay them enough. So they need to have a job so that they're okay doing your work, you know? That, that's where all this stuff kind of comes into, uh, kinda comes into to play here. Oops, that must be four o'clock. Oh, Betsy Vilka. I was actually thinking about her. She looks like she's watching me. What up, Betsy? Long time no see. Look, guys, it's 4 p.m. That means it's time for us to go. I've had a great time uh, chilling out with you guys today. I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Owen Video. Find me right there. You can also visit thevideomarketingschool.com. Check out our courses. Join us in our Facebook group. I hope you've had a good time streaming with us on the TubeBuddy channel. I will see you guys next time. Whoa, poof.